um, rather than go into a big long lecture here, because we, we uh, I'd like, I want to turn to our lab. This is our first lab, so I'm sure there's going to be some kinks and some questions and logistics stuff. So I want to make sure we have plenty of time to work on our stuff. Um, uh, let's talk about, uh, we'll continue this conversation, but let's start chatting a little bit about what is conservation biology? What is this discipline that we are uh, endeavoring to, to spend the semester looking at? Ideas, what do, what do you guys think so far? You guys, you guys gave me some ideas on your, on your survey, but, but you tell me, what, what, are some, what are some ideas that pop into your head? What's conservation biology? Vision of protection, mm -hmm. um, seeing how we can preserve us in a particular area, um, but yeah. Okay, good. So, so far we, we have like this strong interdisciplinary focus. We have uh, ecosystems and, 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 and eco ecosystems and life systems that we're looking at and, and this idea of preserving or this idea of, of fixing uh, kind of thing. Yeah? Good. What else? Or other ideas? No. <laughs> yeah, this, this, we, Eddie, Eddie, Eddie's looking right at me trying to pretend he's not here. Okay, good. So, so give, me, give, me another, give me another idea. Yeah, hi, my name's Eddie. Um, I think it's the taken from both of there, I think it's the field that focuses on uh, both preserving a species, but also the uh, co-relationship um, between the species and the environment. Okay. Okay, so, so a key thing uh, that I keep hearing is this notion of, of preserving, is this notion of helping, is this notion of, of intervening, preserving, saving, like those kinds of ideas, right? Um, so good. So a, a couple, couple. Uh, these aren't. These are just quick ideas. This is a bit wordy. Don't worry about copying this down exactly. But let's look at them, right? So this is pretty much what you guys have been saying. So one is um, uh, the idea of studying the conservation. So so conservation. The idea, the action is in the name, right? It's not just biology or physics or whatever. But it's this subset. Of, at least initially, it was a subset of biology. Now we consider it more of an interdisciplinary science. But nevertheless, its founding, its grounding, its, its meat and potatoes are, is the biological side of things. And then we've added on other, other things over time. So, so the conservation of nature and of Earth's biodiversity, so the diversity of things on life, uh, things on life, things on Earth. So genes, behaviors, um, um, inter interference or, or influence of energy cycles, material cycles, all that stuff. All that is biodiversity. So trying to uh, conserve biodiversity with the, with the aim, so explicitly in this discipline, is the aim of protecting species and habitats and the overall systems in which they live um, from their going away or their not working as well. So this is not a theoret, well, there's, there are theoretical aspects, but this is not a, um, sit off in a lab somewhere and study something and write a few papers here and there and don't talk to anybody. That's not this, right? There's great value in those, those intellectual endeavors and, and, and knowledge for knowledge's sake and all that, that beautiful stuff, but, but this is not that discipline. This is about um, f figuring out if there's a problem, if there is a problem, stopping the, the assault, and then repairing the damage, right? That's what this is about. So, um, so we can, another common term is, uh, definition is the interdisciplinary practice, right? So this idea that, that Caleb first mentioned that, that this is really about different groups of folks, economics background, um, activist background, um, 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 uh, political science background, uh, uh, social justice background, whatever it is, you know, kind of coming together and sort of pulling together and using all of our, uh, our interests as one. Um, okay, so, so central to there, well, let's see, how, how, should I, how should I start this next conversation? So, um, so when I asked you guys on the survey, I was like, hey, so, so do you guys think, you know, is, is our conservation biologist biased or this or that? Most of you said no, most of you guys said, you know, objective, Science-y type folks, sort of you know, looking for the truth, that that kind of thing. Um, uh, I would say that uh, I think that that, te that that tends to be true, right? But let's see what the general public thinks uh, about that. So, so the lab today is going to be looking at um, 
how conservation broadly writ is, is portrayed. So one, how, how commonly is it portrayed? Is it a popular subject? Is it not a popular subject? And then the stuff that is portrayed, how is it portrayed? So I would say that we have a mix in our intellectual and professional endeavors. We have a mix between um, uh, uh, quote unquote theoretical or maybe basic science, which is more about understanding the, the processes, understanding how does that molecule you know, tink onto that other molecule or, or whatever it is, right? And then we have uh, uh, another subset of endeavors that are more about doing something with that knowledge, right? So the classic example, that would be an engineer, right? So an engineer doesn't really typically do research. They take that research and they put it into practice, right? Could be in the computer, could be building a bridge, could be whatever, right? Mostly people don't talk smack about engineers. I do sometimes, but that's okay. Um, uh, but, but people don't, you know, from the get-go think that engineers are like totally like a-holes or something like that, right? Um, if we said, if I said, what are you doing? Oh, I'm interested in, in, in uh, biology. Oh, why are you interested in biology? I want to be uh, a cancer doctor, or I, I want to work on cancer. People are like, oh, that's cool, that's great, right? People don't say, oh, you're so biased about cancer, right? We go, oh, no, that's a cool thing. If someone says, hey, what do you study? I study physics. Why are you studying physics? Oh, because I'm interested in earthquakes, and I want to predict earthquakes and see if we could make less fewer people die during earthquakes and buildings, you know, not, not break when the shaking happens. And people are like, oh, that's cool, right? That's cool. Generally, people don't say, oh, you're so biased about earthquakes. Like, what a jerk, right? But with conservation biology, which is just like those other things, it's an applied field, right? Um, uh, there, there, there's, there, there may be, let's see if this is the case, maybe I'm wrong, but we'll look at, look, look at the stuff during our, uh, our lab here today. But, but there's, there's some, sometimes I think like your conservation bias, oh, you're super biased, right? You, you, you're coming at this with a set of values. And I would say, yes, we are. Just like the cancer doctor is coming at this with an, uh, a set of values trying to minimize suffering and have people be healthier. Just like the engineer is trying to have you know, efficient buildings that don't waste energy and, 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 I don't know, protect people and keep them warm or whatever, right? But, but because of the political nature of some of our, um, and increasingly a lot of our, our society, this discipline has gotten tagged uh, in some circles as sort of you know, suspect or, or ulterior motives. And I would say there are no ulterior motives. The ulterior motives are to make Earth protected, are, are to, to be able to breathe air and have bees around and things like that, right? Um, so, so we'll, we'll see what that looks like. So for today, what we're going to do is um, we're going to, uh, uh, this, I'm sort of jumping into part of this lecture. We'll, we'll go back to this. But, but um, we're going to look at um, what people see. Now, now firstly, I, I totally get it. And I asked you guys how often do you guys read newspapers. And most of you guys don't read, don't read, don't read the news very often, right? And so, and probably I didn't ask this question, but does anybody have a subscription to a newspaper? One, two, three. Okay, three. Okay. Um, so, so 25 years ago, most of my students had a subscription to a newspaper. 10, 15 years ago, it was maybe a little bit less than half. And so now we're like, you know, what, what is that? Maybe I don't know, 10%, 15%, right? And that's not to attack you guys. I'm just saying, it's, it's, things are changing, right? And so increasingly, um, uh, trying to take a snippet of, of how we think about stuff, it, it's a little bit harder. And so it turns out uh, I've been collecting newspapers for a long time, and they're actually nice for this activity because they're standardized, right? So whereas, go back and look at what the web pages said in 1998 or in 2010 or whatever, that, that's a little hard. And then which web pages? And, and that, that website's down now, and that newspaper was bought out and everything. So, th so we're going to use the LA Times as the standardized thing. Picking the Sunday LA Times, it's relatively big, and there should be you know, a lot of articles in there and all that kind of stuff. And so, um, but even, even that, even with this standardized uh, tool that we'll look at and say, hey, what, what, what's in the news? What, what kind of conservation stories are in the news, right? This is what um, the LA Times was like uh, back in 2001, so before the world changed, before 9-11. 
right? So the front page had um, about 2,200 words on it. And um, the, the word density, the data density, which is a measure of how much information is being conveyed, right, was fairly high. It was about um, nine, uh, a little more than nine words per inch. And on the front, and on the whole paper is 127 articles. Um, by 2007, a few years later, um, another random, you know, front page of the LA Times that I grabbed, um, uh, fewer words, right? About 1,500 words on that page. Um, and and the, the paper start, size started to shift a little bit, but, but suffice it to say, it's about, about half that same data density. So check it out. Now we're starting to have many more, the banner's bigger, many more, the photos are taking up a larger chunk of space. Um, and as we go on, this trend just sort of continues and continues and continues. So where we are now is, um, say, compared to about a decade ago on the left, um, which is already, again, reduced from what it was in 2000 or 2001. Um, and we've got, the whole paper has gone from about uh, uh, 120, 130, 140, 120, somewhere in that sort of range of articles in the paper to uh, this last weekend's was 94 articles, right? So the amount of information that's being conveyed in, in a, a typical news story or, or media piece, on average, of course there's long form journalism, but on average is getting fewer and fewer. So the question is, are we seeing, is, is, con are, is the amount of attention paid to conservation stories, even though the overall stories have gone down, have they stayed the same? Has the proportion stayed the same? what's going on with that. And so what we're going to do is we're going to um, essentially survey some of these papers and, and get a sense of what the mainstream media is portraying when it comes to this stuff. And so, yeah, so we've seen a de decrease in all and in, in many, many, many of these things over time. Okay, so um, uh, also, just in the case of the LA Times, not to spend a whole lot of time on this, we've seen different ownership, different, different you know, so we've heard about the merger of different media sources. And so one company buys others and then they sort of get rid of some of the reporters and all this and that and try to streamline things. Overall, that tends to make fewer and fewer folks that are doing the actual creation of information or, or, or synthesizing information and communicating of information fewer and fewer and fewer and, and, and more and more stressed and, and all that kind of stuff. And that's what we saw, that's what we see here. And so, so if we take a look at just, um, uh, front pages, and these, so this is not just LA Times, this is other things as well, but just visually if you take a look at it, this is what stuff was like um, 2007, 2012, and, 20, and then this last Sunday I, I did another random grab. And basically what we're seeing is more and more graphics, more and more visuals, right? And there's nothing wrong with the graphics, I like good photos, those, those are important. But the relative amount of content, the relative amount of, of meat, you know, knowledge in there is going down, right? And so, um, so these are all things to think about and all things to, to, to wonder about. So, so we're gonna try to explore this um, by uh, doing individual surveys of these papers. And so um, uh, this is what we're gonna do. You guys are gonna grab a paper. So first thing, why don't you pull out your, your computer uh, and um, if anybody doesn't have a computer, we can we have some loaners we could give out. So so get stuff out and then go to our Canvas page and in the module, the lab module, the the lab module, lab activity in week one. Did you 